Hi everyone, hope you're all safe and well. And as a good part of our nation is now reopening uh, from the stay-at-home orders caused by this Wuhan virus, we here in California were still sheltered in place, but we also are slowly reopening and now completing week number 10. I'd like to start us off uh, this morning, uh, if you've heard this phrase before, timing is everything. Timing is everything. And this story uh, I'd like to present to you, it comes from a news organization called thegreensboro.com. And the title of this article is Faulty Calendar Has Some Giving Thanks a Little Early. Faulty Calendar Has Some Giving Thanks a Little Early. This article was written uh, some years ago now from a time prior to when electronic calendars, which we know are stored in our computers and in our phones, when we didn't have that, it made a necessity of notebook and wall calendars. So in the time before computers and uh, portable cell phones, to keep track of our schedules, we needed either a notebook or a wall calendar. From November 1996, Associated Press uh, and also uh, the newspaper then known as the Jackson Sun. Story goes like this. Kathy Mulliken's bird is cooked and her calendar is toast. Kathy Mulliken's bird is cooked and her calendar is toast. Mulliken had her Thanksgiving turkey dinner already cooked on Thursday, November 21st, again, 1996, and her friends and her families <clears throat> were going to be coming a week later on November 28th. What are they going to think? She asked, and she answered her own question. They're going to think, I'm a kook. She should have never believed that free calendar, that free calendar that the Jackson Madison County General Hospital in Tennessee had given out to some 40,000 uh, visitors at the end of the previous year. And every last calendar said that Thanksgiving, the following year, 1996, was on the 21st of November, when it should have said the 28th. They were a week off. And 40,000 calendars all had printed that wrong, incorrect date. Miss Mulliken said, I wouldn't have known that the date was wrong, except my niece called and then she asked what I was doing. And when I told her I was finishing up the Thanksgiving dinner, she said, a week in advance? A week in advance? So again, timing is everything. Timing is everything. We know this from the world of nature, God's creation. We see this in things such as the migration of the monarch butterflies annually uh, to California, the migration of the gray whales along our California coast, and the return of the birds, uh, the swallows, to the San Juan Capistrano area near San Diego. The timing of those annual migrations is everything cannot be too early or too late because the reproduction of the species is at stake. Timing is everything is also one of the keys for all of us to living well, to living fruitfully, successfully in God's ways, knowing what to do and the appropriate time when to do it. Perfect timing, so never making a mistake, always being right on time. That's, that's not something humanly achievable. Only the Lord God possesses perfect timing. However, there's also something known as wise timing. Wise timing, which is to live under God's specific purposes and plans for our lives. 
That is not only achievable, but it's also modeled for all of us so that we can see it and learn from that by the earthly life of our Lord Jesus. And that's what we'll be looking at uh, today as we continue our journey through the Gospel of John. Let's examine the spiritual truths that can help all of us to live, not with perfect timing, but with wise timing under God's umbrella of time. Okay, so the setting of our passage or our passage that comes from John chapter 7, verses 1 through 9. And as I repeat every morning uh, each week, please read the entirety of this passage for yourselves. A portion of this was included at the very beginning of our video message. But the setting of our, of our passage, it takes place back in the region of Galilee, which is was then northern Israel, Palestine, the area where Jesus had grown up. And we're told that at that time, Jesus was purposely staying away from the southern region known as Judea. That was because the religious Jews were there waiting for him, waiting for him, biding their time in order to kill him. It was near the time of the Jewish Feast of the Tabernacles. And this feast came at the end of September, beginning of October. It was a festival that lasted for approximately eight days. During that festival time, the inhabitants of Jerusalem would build shelters out of tree limbs, booths, which were uh, then thatched over with leaves and the inhabitants of Jerusalem would live in them temporarily during the time of this great festival. It was a reminder for them of what their ancestors had lived like during their time in the wilderness for 40 years. This festival was a time for the inhabitants of Jerusalem to remember and celebrate the Lord's goodness and his abundance to their ancestors and to them as well. During the time of this festival, every adult Jewish male who lived within 15 miles of the holy city of Jerusalem was required to attend and take part. And as this festival time drew near, Jesus' four brothers, his earthly siblings, they approached him. They approached him in order to give him some family advice, some brotherly advice. So what spiritual truths can help us to live with spiritually wise timing? Spiritually wise timing in the here and now. A couple of truths we'll look at today. The first one is this. It's to understand that God's time, the Lord's time, is not the same as our time. So again, it's to understand that God's time is not the same as our time. And the Bible reminds us of, of that truth in 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 8, which says, Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day. Again, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. The ancient Greeks had two words for time, and those two words are also used in our New Testament in the Bible. The first word I think many of us are familiar with is chronos. Chronos refers to the chronological or sequential time that were familiar with in this world, it's quantitatively measured by seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years. Chronos time refers to the finite realm of time of human beings. And from the realm of Chronos comes the behaviors, our responses to Chronos time of things such as multitasking, 
Maybe it's pushing our own agendas or having the thought that there's only so much time in order to get things done. Those are all behaviors or responses to chronos time. The second word for time is kairos. Kairos. And kairos refers to or it signifies an appointed or an opportune time or moment. Again, an appointed or opportune time or moment. And where Kronos is measured quantitatively, Kairos time is measured qualitatively. Qualitatively. This is God's time, the Lord's time, that achieves or fulfills his greater plans and purposes. Okay? And then from the realm or mindset of Kairos time comes the behaviors or responses on our part of being able to see in our everyday lives God's kingdom opportunities. These opportunities that he desires to put before each of us each and every day. And like a focused watchman, we should all be aware of and courageously respond to these opportunities that he puts before us. So from our passage, Jesus' brothers, they were operating from a worldly uh, mindset or a chronos mindset. They were basically trying to get their brother to force him or coerce him to go to the city of Jerusalem and there present himself before this huge crowd that had gathered at the beginning of this autumn festival and that Jesus would put before all of that crowd his identity as the Messiah in a public way. That's what his brothers were trying to force him to do. And it's so ironic because Jesus' brothers, while they believed that he could do miracles, at this point they did not believe that he was the long-awaited Messiah. So you could basically say they were trying to egg him on to do this. But Jesus' response to his earthly brother, brothers, it showed that he rejected the Kronos mindset and instead he chose to operate from the Kairos, the Kairos mindset. He said to them from John chapter 7, six and se verses 6 and 7, my time, my time has not yet come, but your time, chronos, the worldly, uh, the temporary, is always ready. The world, which represents those opposed to Jesus and also the systems of the world in opposition to God's kingdom, the world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that its works are evil. So Jesus refused to be pressured by chronos or human time. And he instead looked for that kairos or opportune moment in accordance with his father's will and his father's greater plan. An example or illustration uh, from the world of music related to this you know, this time of year, our family would be uh, very much looking forward to hearing both uh, Sammy and Michael performing uh, on violin for their school orchestras, and also for Sammy, her performances with the Glendale Youth Orchestra. Uh, all of those performances, all canceled until further notice, again, because of the Wuhan coronavirus. A great part of the enjoyment, both for uh, Cheryl and myself, would be to see how uh, their gifted music teachers, and also they're the conductors, how they would take each year these young musicians of varying abilities and then shape them. Shape these students to not only learn to play together, to play in tune and play the notes in sync, but also having them play together to express the beauty, 
the majesty and the wonder of these classical uh, music works as the students follow the movements and the lead of their master teacher in front of them, the conductor. And similarly for all of us, if the Lord God, if we think of him as both the composer as well as the conductor of the music of our lives, our spiritual lives, then our responsibility is to not only learn the music, which also requires repetitive practice and learning, being able to play uh, not just the notes, but the music, but also this, to be able to learn on our part, to follow the lead and the timing of the conductor. And just as we've watched uh, musical orchestra performances, either on TV or live performances, not to get ahead of the conductor or not to lag behind the conductor. Because as we all know, when that happens, chaos, chaos, okay? And in the course of our short earthly lives, there are situations, events, and people that each day the Lord God desires and plans to bring our way, to bring into our lives, bring before us. And as he does this, what will we choose? Will we choose to be controlled by chronos time? Or will we open ourselves to his kairos time? Choosing godly wisdom to help us recognize and then act upon those appointed or opportune times that the Lord has put before us. That's one choice. And the other choice is this. Will we choose to follow the master's lead, the Lord's time, the Lord's pacing, or will we instead choose to try to force our own time our own agenda, which will it be? And we need to choose carefully because it's the difference between being too busy or being too distracted versus our being available to be the hands, the feet, and the mouth of our Lord Jesus in these very strange and uncertain times where we find ourselves. So again, a spiritual truth that can help all of us uh, to live with godly wise timing here and now, it's to understand that God's time, his time, is not our time. And a second spiritual truth that can help us all to live with godly wise timing is this. It's our need to learn how to wait upon the Lord. It's our need, all of our need, to learn how to wait upon the Lord. And again, the Bible reminds us of this truth in Psalm 27, verse 14, which says, Wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord to be strong and to take heart or to have courage. And again, to wait for the Lord. Waiting is something that we're all very familiar with these past few months. Uh, and one big lesson I believe this pandemic has taught all of us is very much how difficult and how hard it is to wait. How difficult and how hard it is to wait. So even as uh, the California uh, and county restrictions are now being lifted, if ever so slowly, uh, and we've seen now for businesses, restaurants, and even churches to reopen. And also places, uh, recreational places that we all might have took for granted, like parks and beaches, those are now reopened as well. Even with all of these things slowly reopening, it feels like we've been shut down forever. Feels like we've been shut down forever. And people all across the state, I think what we're watching, they're no longer wanting to wait 
on the sometimes mixed messages uh, coming from our government. In this secular global communication and microwave, microwave age that we live in today, we have become a very impatient people. A very impatient people. We want everything now, not wanting to wait. And in the spiritual realm, learning to wait is so important. So important because waiting upon the Lord, it's essential to our living well, our spiritual well-being, to live life the way that God intended for each of us. From our passage, Jesus did not bow down to the pressure of his earthly brothers, which was to go with them to Jerusalem and announce to the world that he was the long-awaited Messiah. Instead, Jesus trusted and Jesus obeyed the will of his Father in heaven, which was to wait on him for that next Kairos moment. To wait on him for that next Kairos moment. Jesus told his earthly brothers this from John chapter 7, verses 8 and 9. You all go on to the festival. I am not going up to this festival because my time has not yet fully come. After he had said this, he stayed in Galilee. So Jesus waited upon his heavenly father. And not long after his brothers had left, he was prompted. He received that Kairos moment, and he too left for the festival in Jerusalem. Again, timing is everything. For the Kairos timer moment meant for Jesus to go to that festival, not in a public way, not to present himself before the crowd as the Messiah, which would draw unwanted attention to himself at that point, but instead he was to go, it says, in secret. Or another word for that is incognito, keeping a very low profile, to conceal his identity. For this was part of the Lord's, the Lord God's bigger plan. In the four gospel stories of the life of Jesus, we learn, if we look very carefully, of the importance of Jesus actively taking time to spend in solitude and prayer with his heavenly Father. Solitude and prayer, the time that the Lord Jesus spent with his heavenly Father. And it was time well spent and modeled for all of us. It was a lifestyle embodied by patience, by trust, and by obedience. So the relationship that Jesus had with his heavenly Father embodied by patience, trust, and obedience while he waited to act on his Father's will. So again, Jesus, the Lord Jesus, never tried to force things on his own. Never tried to force things on his own or take matters into his own hands. He always maintained that intimate connection with his Heavenly Father. Again, one of patience, trust, and obedience. And likewise, for all of us in the here and now, in order for us to grow and to thrive in our relationships with the Lord, to better recognize and respond to those kairos or opportune moments that he places in our lives, it also requires spiritually learning to wait upon the Lord. So again, the importance of spiritually learning to wait upon the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord helps all of us to grow, and in those three areas, patience. The Lord is patient. That's part of his character. And his spirit produces and grows this fruit within all who follow him. 
And the Lord oftentimes will use people, other people, or circumstances to grow that patience within our lives. So if you ever ask the Lord, Lord, help me to grow in patience, be careful what you ask for, because you will receive it through either people or circumstances that will try your patience. Waiting upon the Lord helps us to grow in patience. It also helps us to grow in trust. To not trust in ourselves, to not trust in other people, but to place our ultimate trust and well-being in the Lord God, the risen Jesus. That all of us would have the confidence to place whatever situation or whatever circumstances into our Lord's capable hands. That's what it means to grow in trust. And then obedience, waiting upon the Lord helps us all to grow in obedience. It's to follow God's will, his plan or agenda, and not to follow our own, okay? It takes uh, submission and dying to our own selves to be able to obediently follow the Lord. So as the Lord grows, grows us in his ways, uh, these ways, we discover that we become less prone, less prone to make or to follow the human-centered chronos time or deadlines. So we become less prone to following chrono chronos time. We also become less prone to make or follow rash or hastily made decisions. So when we're able to grow in waiting upon the Lord, we will never, uh, what would you say, end up making bad decisions because we felt rushed. So again, less prone to make or follow rash or hastily made decisions. And as the Lord grows us in his ways, we discover that we will also become less prone to make or follow secular or worldly-based plans. We don't follow the world, we follow the risen Jesus. But as we wait upon the Lord and his perfect timing, and as he grows us in patience, trust, and obedience, we become more sensitized, more attentive to recognize his voice, his will, and his direction. And that's also my hope and my prayer for us as a church during this time. Uh, these past 10 weeks of being sheltered in place where we could not meet. Hopefully for all of us, this has been a time for us to draw closer to the Lord with the extra available time that has been given where we couldn't go out and do other things. And as we come to this time now for our church specifically, uh, we're looking at what is God's time, the right time to reopen uh, our church building. Um, our elders are prayerfully uh, and thoughtfully looking at that right now. And uh, why don't we take this time as a church to be able to also pray uh, for when that opportune time, that Kairos moment would come. So let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your great love for us. We acknowledge that your plans, your ways, and your timing are perfect. And though we currently are living through uncertain and very dark times, please help us to acknowledge, to understand, and to learn that, again, your time, Kairos time, is different from our time, Kronos time. Help us also to acknowledge, understand, and learn that we all need to learn to wait upon you because timing is everything. It's key to our living well the way that you intended. Please direct our steps, Lord, both individually and as a church to your timing, that we not lag behind and that we not jump ahead of you in your perfect time. 
And please help us, Lord, as a church going forward to love and especially care for our most vulnerable to this deadly virus that has plagued our nation and world, which is our seniors and also those uh, living with pre-existing medical conditions. Lord, we seek your time to discern when to reopen our church on Sunday mornings again. We entrust that to you. Help us not to force our agenda into that. And Lord, please help us to grow in our very, our very need to learn to wait upon you in godly patience, in godly trust and obedience. Thank you, Lord. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all uh, for tuning in uh, to the message. Uh, God bless you this week. Uh, see you all soon.